Hello, everybody. Um, one of my favorite meditations is uh, thinking about the kindness of others. And I find that when I do that, not only does my mind get happy and I forget whatever problems or afflictions are coming up in my mind, but also my mind expands. And I remember specifically uh, some instructions that Venerable Children gave us about when we're doing the kindness of others, we are not just thinking about the actual people who we've benefited from, but the people who supported them, their family, their friends, their relatives, anyone who encouraged them. Uh, it's also part of that uh, network of kindness. And then when we do that, we begin to expand outwards uh, our circle of appreciation and gratitude. But when I, I've done this particular meditation, I've, I made a decision to go even further back. And so, uh, for example, hmm, I thought about those early um, humanoid, hum, um, hominids actually, hominids, who uh, first discover how to harness the power of fire. I was like, where would I be if, I, uh, if they hadn't done that? And uh, we right now take for granted the fact that we have a furnace here and that we can put in it uh, wood and fire and we can get uh, cozy and warm during the winter. Well, the, uh, the kind beings who uh, provided that for us are so separated from us by time and space. They weren't even in this continent. You know, they were in um, more than likely in parts of uh, Africa like Kenya or South Africa. And that's where some of the earliest records of the harnessing of fire have been found by um, archaeologists. So I can imagine how not even a full human, not even someone that spoke my language, not even someone that looked like me, and yet this being is responsible for my current well-being, for the fact that I can spend the winter here at the Abbey and not worry about being cold or freeze to death. Uh, something else that we take for granted that did not happen within our um, what we called our present time or our, even our present era is the discovery of the wheel and um, it's likely that the first time that the wheel was used was used for a uh, as a pottery pottery making tool and after that um, earlier mm, humans uh, slowly uh, mm, perfected it to be used for transportation. So um, in places like um, uh, Eurasia, uh, Southwest, uh, Southwest Asia, uh, there have been found records of how these uh, uh, wheelbarrows and carts were first put together. Now where would we be without transportation, without wheels, without tires, without a way to move from one place to the other. Certainly our civilization would not have expanded so rapidly or grown um, and advanced without the ability to uh, transport knowledge and goods from one place to the other. So here again, uh, my heart fills with gratitude and appreciation to beings who really in, in time and space I could See, they're not at all related to me, but yet they are. Uh, they are uh, quite closely related to my well-being. And then let's talk about um, the discovery and the use of bricks for shelter. Uh, this happened again back in, uh, I believe, oh, I had all my notes. Um, but anyway, it was brilliant. They, in, in certain parts of the world where the, the weather was just right, they uh, developed this uh, system of building structures 
with bricks, which then translated to, you know, the buildings and the amazing uh, complex and um, tall buildings that we have right now that we enjoy. Um, so again, we owe our well-being to people who didn't even live where we live. So as I do this meditation practice, I'm trying to span my mind, not just uh, in space, but also in time, because going back all the way to thousands of years ago when these things actually happened. Um, another one who is very big is agriculture. And uh, this agriculture was discovered, was, was first employed um, in parts of what uh, is now Iraq, Iran, Egypt, Palestine, um, I forget there's another one, but anyway, it's called the Fertile Crescent, and that's where the earliest, some of the earliest records of both pastoralism and agriculture have been found. And so where would we be if we uh, did not have crops to eat, if we did not have uh, ways to grow food and um, be nourished? So again, the, I, I owe that quite directly to those people who, even though they have very few of our technological advances, they still provide uh, something that is a great impact on our life and our sustenance, our well-being. And they were all the way in the Middle East. They were not here. However, when we look at this continent, we can see that Native Americans, uh, those native peoples of Central and South America, have developed over uh, hundreds of years wealth of knowledge of plant usage and how to be good stewards of the land. And based on those knowledge of plants and herbal medicines, a, you know, a lot of the medica medicines that we use currently have been developed thanks to the fact that they safeguarded that lore. The shamans of the Native Americans, both in Central, South, and North America, were the guardians of a wealth of knowledge about how to cure the body using uh, medicinal plants and herbs. So again, we are quite indebted to them for our well-being. And if we weren't bent on destroying our environment, there would still be even more possibility of discovering more medicines and cures in uh, those areas of the world, in those uh, uh, pristine environments of which uh, there are not so many anymore. Um, and which takes me to medicine. The ancient Egyptians and Indians uh, in the Indian uh, subcontinent develop a wealth of knowledge about the human body and how to use different kinds of uh, medicines. Ayurvedic medicine, for example, uh, is still a resource that many people looking for non-traditional ways of, of healing uh, go to and turn to. So, as I look at the totality of human experience, the totality of uh, what uh, humans and non-humans contribute to my well-being, then I feel connected with uh, everyone through space and time. And it brings a lot of joy and peace to, to my mind. And it fuels uh, a wish to repay the kindness. Thank you. <laughs>